So I'm going to be recording the calorimetry lab for you. Um, I have two unknowns. They are labeled A and B, and we'll go to the balance and get their masses. This will be for unknown A. And now we'll do unknown B. And then we'll go and place them in the hot water. So this is the calorimeter on the right over here. And this is the water that we're gonna add. Uh, I wasn't very careful in measuring. So you're gonna have to use the volume of water that it's indicated on the graduated cylinder. So I'll get a better view of this so that you can measure it more precisely. Take that snapshot so that you can have that. Okay, so that's about it. Uh, now we're gonna wait for the water to heat. And so I have samples A and B, and keep track in case the numbers wear off. Uh, a is the larger of the two, or the letters wear off, and B is the smaller. And we're gonna try to heat it up to the boiling point of water, which is 100 degrees Celsius. We'll go ahead and add this water to the calorimeter. And make sure it all gets out. And we'll assemble the calorimeter, and then this is the stir that we'll use. And then we'll take a digital thermometer and we'll let it set in there. And before we get started with the calorimetry, we'll go ahead and uh, record the temperature that it says up here. But it takes a while for a thermometer to come to equilibrium with the temperature of the water. So we'll just let that sit for a few minutes. So I've uh, had this boiling for a while. Um, I've got the thermometer in the water with the samples. Um, I also have the crucible tongs, which I'll be using to pull out the samples out. That's all just to control uh, temperature. Um, <clears throat> you can see the thermometer temperature is about mm, 99 and a half. It goes up and down quite a bit. I think that's the cycling of the hot plate going on. So I'll take a snapshot and post that. That's the temperature that we'll use. Now the temperature of the water itself is 17 degrees, if you can read that. Okay, take a snapshot. And that one's been quite steady for some time. And then uh, I, the next thing I'll do is I'll transfer uh, one of the hot pieces of metal over and then we'll measure the temperature rise after we add the metal to the water. Okay, and this will be unknown A when I do it. Okay, so grab the sample A. And then you notice I have a paper towel down here. Let's knock off any extra water. I'll drop that in there very quickly. I'll put the lid back on it. And I'll stir the, temp the solution around. And then we'll watch that temperature rise. So you watch the temperature. And at its highest point, that's the temperature we'll take. right at 22, 22.1. So we're getting ready to do the next sample, that's B. And I wanna make sure we get around 50 mils. And it looks like I did a pretty good job this time. Remember, you have to record this exact value. I'll zoom in and I'll get back down to eye level. It looks a little bit above 50. Uh, you should take that into account in your calculations. 
All right, so now I need to add that water. I've cleaned and dried the calorimeter. I'll add that water directly to the calorimeter. And make sure you get as much of it out as you can. And then we're gonna go ahead and reassemble. I'll stick the thermometer in. It takes a while for the temperature to come back to equilibrium. So we're gonna let that, this is just boiling along. We'll measure its temperature again later. It's unknown B. And then I reassembled the calorimeter and we'll let that thing come to its equilibrium temperature. Right now it says 17 and a half, but before we get started, we'll make another measurement of that temperature. Okay, so now we're ready to do unknown B. Here's our initial temperature. Take a photo of that. It was 99. And then here's the temperature of our, our calorimeter. And then let me go ahead and add the sample. Again, I'm gonna open this up and move it to the side. Take this thermometer out to get it out of my way. I'll grab the sample with my tongs. I'll quickly knock the excess water off. And I'll drop it in and then we'll close it up. And again, we'll record the highest temperature that we see. It'll be hard to do this. I don't know if you saw the little bit of a real high temperature it had. That's probably because it was sitting right on the piece of metal. Like we've already peaked out. Yeah, 20, let's say 20.3 is probably the highest. Okay, we'll stop it there. So that completes uh, the recording of the data for your experiment. And um, you can go ahead and do the calculations and submit those online along with the pre-lab and post-lab questions.